it's Michael Gray, and it's January 2020, and I'm going to give my explanation of why I think a longer queue is better than a normal size queue. So the normal queue is 58 inches, which is a 29 inch butt and a 29 inch shaft. So this is a 58 inch Sean. This is a 58 inch Predator S2 with a makeshift wrap and a butt cap that fits the proprietary extension. So I've got a 3 inch extension and an 8 inch extension. They also make a 12 inch. Unfortunately, they don't make a 5 inch, which is probably what is the best size for extension and uh, <clears throat> the way that I feel about it. And this is an Omen Q. And the only thing special about this Omen Q is that it's a 31 inch edge, uh, Jacoby edge hybrid. Uh, Low deflection shaft and the 30 inch was like a $200 shaft and the 31 inch was like over $300. So basically just for the extra inch on here uh, because of tooling and, and what it being an unusual size this uh, shaft was, uh, was over $100 more just for the extra inch. But they were the only ones at the time to my knowledge that was making a shaft that was longer. And at the time I had a, a 30 inch butt, so I had a 61 inch Q that was two pieces, which uh, I feel that the less pieces you have, the better, uh, right? So I used to play with, a, with one of those extensions, those four inch collars in the middle. But when you did that, it was often that you rolled your Q on the table and it had a little bit of a, a taper roll or a wobble just because of this small four inch thing not fitting here correctly at the joints. Uh, or for whatever reason and I just didn't like the extra length in front of my hand I wanted it behind my hand which is why I really like the, uh, the Predator the Predator extensions and then most recently I just got this Viking exact shot that has these uh, lines up the side of the queue it's four of them and a uh, Kamui tip and this is actually a 32 inch shaft this shaft cost me, delivered, was about $400. So it was like $300 plus an extra $40 maybe for the Unilock joint and maybe a, whatever, $20, $30 for the, uh, for the Kamui tip. So uh, I just got this. I'm trying to get used to it right now, but so far I like it. Uh, one thing that I liked about this is that it allowed me to have uh, the butt of the queue and the shaft of the queue the same length. So this is 32 inch and the way that I played with the butt is also 32 inches. So I can go ahead and show you that right now. So we're going to use this as the reference, the normal size cube, which is the Sean here. And this is the normal size Predator shaft I'm going to remove. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put on this 32 inch cube uh, shaft here. And then I've got the 3 inch extension. So this is 29 inch butt with a 3 inch extension which is also 32. So now we can see if we put them together they're the same size just as if I took the Sean apart. Those are also the same size and then together you can see the difference. Uh, so this is basically the way that uh, my playing cube is set up right now. If I'm gambling, if I'm practicing, whatever it is, I'm playing with the the 64 inch cube rather than the 38 inch cube. And this is tip to tip here. And you can see I've got six inches here, right? So for presentation purposes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend it even further and I'm going to put the 8 inch extension and I'm going to give some basic rationales, some physics rationales of why I think that the longer cube is better. And I kind of like looking at things at extremes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use extreme examples. 
So, in this case, let's say I've got to make the seven ball into this pocket. Okay, so I'm going to give some basic examples of situations that we find ourselves in as pool players. So in this example, we've got these dots on the table. I have an object ball and a cue ball lined up to the pocket. Right? So in this case, I've got my regular size cue. And if I line up as I normally do, and I come back here, I have my back foot on the line. And I get back here. Now, where my hand is, is right here. So let's just say I'm on these two fingers mostly, which is the way that I have the grip. This finger is usually loose, this finger is usually loose. And not much space in between here, but I'm on the end of the cube, right? So I'm not even on the wrap. The longer bridge you have, the further back of the cube you're going to be. So if you have a long bridge like Shane or like Jason Shaw, you're going to be even, you would be even further on the back of the cube. Okay. So in contrast, if I was using this super long cue with the 8 inch extension and the 32 inch shave, Same thing, I can have the same length of bridge. But now what I've got is I've got about 9 or 10 inches. I'm still in the exact same spot on the, uh, on the butt. The butt ends about right there. I'm a little bit further up because of the shaft being a little bit longer. So you can see now I'm actually on the grip rather than on the back of the cue. Right? So I'm a little bit further up. But now I have a, a lot more room to work with on longer uh, shots, of course. But just on this basic shot, now I've got this mass behind my hand, right? And this is the key, is where the mass is of the cue versus where, where the fulcrum is, where your arm, the pendulum, swings, whether or not the mass is in front of your hand or the mass is in back of your hand, right? So what we're going to do in this example if the mass is behind my hand and I have a long, I have a long bridge and I have to go through the ball, then if the mass is in front of my hand, then basically my hand and my bridge mechanism has to push the mass forward. If the mass is in back of my hand, then since it's behind my hand, it's the mass pushing my hand forward. Now I'm going to give an example of that using some Gold's Gym weights. Okay. So on the example of the normal size cube, where my hand is on the back, we can say in this instance, we can have a couple of examples where the weight is actually my hand, right? So in this case, when I transition from backstroke to forward stroke, you can see that I'm pushing the cue forward. I'm pushing the cue forward with the weight. So my hand is doing the work in this instance. My hand is actually the weight because this is where most of the weight is consolidated because of the hand of my weight on the cue. And even with a loose cue, it's still and even if the pivot point of the cue is right here, if I were to go like this, it's still my hand pushing the cue forward. Now an example here with the weight of the cue, and we can look at things in extremes, let's just say that this weight was on the cue. And and I'm here. When I come back and I start going forward, the weight, this weight here, it's going to have to, it's going to have more of a tendency for you to want to decelerate because of the weight being in front of your hand. And it's almost like the cue's going this way and your hand is, have a tendency to pull back this way because of the, the cue, especially on shots where you have to have a quick hit, right? So, 
in the opposite end of the spectrum, if you've got the weight, and this is mass, this is weight behind your hand. In the last example, this is where my grip was, and this is how much weight was behind my hand. So we can make it an even more extreme example where there is even more weight behind my hand. So in this instance, I'm here with the weight behind my hand, and you can imagine the difference between, between a locomotive pulling a bunch of cars, where in this instance, it's the, the train engine pulling the cars forward. In this instance, it's as though the train is reversed and the train is, the engines of the train is behind your hand and it's reversing towards this way. So in this, in this instance, the, the train, the weight is doing the work of pushing the cue forward rather than your hand pushing the cue forward or the weight pulling the cue forward. So because of that, especially on shots where you're going to have long, fluid strokes through the ball, And a lot of this is stroke dependent or your style dependent. So for someone like for someone like Alex Pagelin, it may be better for him. Well, he's short anyway. He's small in stature. So a regular size cue for him is like a three inch, three inch extension for somebody else. So he's already playing with kind of an extended cue, but even though it's the regular size cue. Now for me, I'm 5 foot 11, so I need a little bit longer cue, which is about 3 inches on the back, and for me, 2 or 3 inches on the shaft makes this cue uh, perfect for me. So now you can see, I've got, I still have 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 inches behind my hand on a normal shot, where, where Alex Pagelion comes back he comes back maybe, you know, he has a few short strokes, he pauses, he comes back four inches, and then goes straight through the ball. Where somebody with a longer stroke may be here, and they may have long strokes like this, but they still, they still go through the ball. If the weight is behind your hand, then going through the behind, behind your hand going through the ball has the weight pushing the cue forward. So the cue's going to be able to go straighter longer with you having a lighter grip than if there was no weight behind your hand and you were here and you were trying to go forward. Now you're basically pushing the cue instead of the weight. This accentuates you being able to allow the cue to do the work rather than here where you're more prone to force the cue to do the work. Now there's some types of shots, of course, jump shots. Now anytime that I find myself elevated, then if I have to be elevated, then I would prefer to not have the, the weight behind my hand. I prefer to have the shorter cue, right? Because the weight behind your hand with an elevation is going to, is going to uh, accentuate any kind of off-center uh, squirt or off-center hit of the cue ball. But on shots where you're more level or as level as possible, it's preferable to have the weight behind your hand. So that's my basic explanation on that, and we'll see how this video comes out. Hope it was useful. Have a good day.